Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Union Church. And you know, as our call to worship and come before the Lord, uh, Dan Teguchi will be presenting a worship hymn called Nearer to God. Please stand if you're able and join in singing Nearer My God to Thee. be seated. Well, again, good morning, everyone. You know, it is so good to be here. Thank you all for coming to celebrate the life of May Arakawa. You know, while we give uh, our sincerest condolences to the girls, Kathy, Janice, and Joyce, our sincere condolences on the passing of your mother and all of the family. And while we do that, uh, we're reminded that uh, what we're here for is to celebrate the life of May. You know, we're gonna hear testimonies of her life. We're gonna hear worship songs. We're gonna pray together. We're gonna see a beautiful, beautiful video of her life. 
And as we do all of this, uh, let's remember why we're here. We're here to celebrate it. We're here to enjoy the past remembrances, bring smiles to our face, faces, and, and just feel the warmth of May's life in our lives, okay? So it's a celebration. Everybody okay with that? Yeah, let's celebrate. You know, uh, having tears and sadness at a, a, at a memorial service is a natural thing. Uh, we all do that. But I know today, and that's how May would have wanted it, she would want us to just feel the joy of her life that God has given to her. So let's all celebrate, okay? Just look at May's picture up there. It's a beautiful, beautiful picture. And looking at the picture reminds me all about her life. My name is Stan Date. And uh, I lead a team of volunteers from Crossway Church. Uh, we go to uh, Nikkei Senior Gardens. We put on a church service there every Sunday, and we've been doing that for the last nine years. And it was during that time, in fact, the last couple of years, where me and Wallace were residents at Nikkei Senior Gardens, we got to meet them and we got to know them. We said goodbye to Wallace, and in the, in af in the aftermath, well, we just made such good friends with me. You know, we'd always see her in the lobby smiling, and she'd be attending all of our church services and always grateful for everything that people have done for her. So again, as we go through this service, uh, let's think about her in a very, very joyful way as we celebrate her life, okay? Let's pray. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we offer a prayer of thanksgiving, thankful for the life that you have given to all of us, but today we are especially thankful for the abundant life that you bestowed on May. We're thankful for the relief you provide to the sadness that we will feel as we bid May farewell because it reflects the love that we have for her. So be with us this morning as we celebrate her life. May it bring a smile to all of us and may it bring glory to you. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to uh, start off with a scripture reading from Martin May's son-in-law, and he'll lead us in a scripture reading out of John. Martin? The scripture reading is from John, chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> you know, one of the things I uh, really enjoy about any memorial service is the personal history of the individual we're honoring. Uh, when the personal history is read, it, it just brings out so much more in a person's life. Now, May's personal history is written in the uh, program, but we're gonna have Kurt, her son-in-law, come up here and read the personal history and you'll learn so much more about our beloved May. So, uh, Kurt. Good morning, everyone. May was born on May 8th, 1932 in Sacramento, California. She had four brothers, three older and one who was younger. In September of 1942, uh, during World War II, 
me and her family were sent to Topaz concentration camp in Utah. They remembered, excuse me, they remained there for two years. She was so young, she didn't remember very much of the internment camp, but she did specifically remember the living conditions. They were pretty deplorable. She distinctively remembered that they had to share the showers and toilets with other families there. All meals were held in a mess hall, and they also endured some, endured some very uh, bad sandstorms there. After being released in 1944, the Nomura family re relocated to Cleveland, Ohio, only to return back to the Bay Area in 1948. May graduated from Berkeley High School in 1950 and started working for the Navy Purchasing Office for five years. She attended junior college and received a diploma in medical assisting. In 1957, she moved back to Los Angeles, or moved to Los Angeles to join her cousin Grace. Once there, she worked as a medical secretary and then as a legal, a legal secretary before meeting Wally Arakawa in a bowling league in 1962. It wasn't until they met again at a party in Los Angeles that they noticed each other and began to date. They were married on March 28, 1964. Soon after, they were blessed with three daughters, Kathy, Joyce, and Janice, and Wally and May had a very active life as well. Besides raising three daughters, they found time to go ballroom dancing, play golf, travel, and they loved going on cruise trips. <coughs> Excuse me. They were very involved in the Mariners, which was a young married group at Union Church. May also found the time to socialize with their girlfriends in a group they called the Funsters. Once the kids started junior high school, May started working part-time at Dr. Oppenheimer's office. May loved watching sports, especially the Los Angeles Dodgers and Lakers. She even gave me some friendly ribbing in the 1990s and 2000s when the Giants and Warriors were pretty hard to watch. <laughs> May was very athletic. In her younger days, her favorite sports were playing basketball and bowling. As she got older, she enjoyed uh, playing tennis and golf. May's athleticism is probably why she encouraged her daughters to take tennis lessons, bowling lessons, and to play in basketball games. However, she was often puzzled as to why her athletic abilities were not always passed on to her daughters. Due to being sent to camp at an early age, May did not experience many of the typical childhood activities. She was determined to make sure that her daughters would get to experience everything in life. So after school, she would pick up Kathy, Joyce, and Janice and drive them to all types of classes, speed reading, flamenco, jazz, ballet, tap, glass bowling, swimming, springboard diving, synchronized swimming, art classes, ice skating, gymnastics, Girl Scouts, piano, guitar, flute, and even handball classes. And that's where I probably should end right there. She hoped that something might, might stick. She was the ultimate mom, always wanting the best for her three girls. May doted not only on Kathy, Joyce, and Janice, but her nieces and nephews and grandchildren as well. Many times, Family vacations involved the Nomura cousins in the Bay Area or the Arakawa cousins in San Diego or Hawaii. When able, Wally and May were, were at every event, game, performance, award ceremony, and graduations of their grandkids. Some of the grandkids' fondest moments were the frequent trips to the hometown, hometown buffet with grandma and grandpa. On Saturday, May 13th, 2023, five days after her 91st birthday, May passed from this life. She is dearly missed, but we are comforted and at peace, knowing that she is now reunited with Wally and home with the Lord. Thank you, Kirk. You know, I wish uh, I knew all of this stuff about me. I mean, I would have taken her golfing with me, you know. But, uh, but that's a wonderful uh, history. Now, the next thing I wouldn't mind doing is watching these three girls tap dance <laughs> and what else? Uh, do flamenco dancing. You guys still know how to do that? No. <laughs> but what a, what a wonderful, wonderful tribute uh, to, um, you know, me and everything that she did for the family. Just wonderful. I, I knew, a, I'd say a lot about her, but boy, the personal history uh, really, really brought out a lot, lot more. So thank you for that. Okay. Okay, now 
we're going to have a eulogy done by Vern. And again, another portion of the program where you get to know the real me. Kurt, I mean Vern. In 1962, sports leagues were very popular in the Japanese-American communities. There were leagues for basketball and softball and tennis, golf, bowling. They were a way for people to get together for a fun activity with friends and also to meet new people. One evening, a young woman living in Los Angeles who loved playing sports decided to go out bowling with her friends. But little did she know, that one random decision would change the rest of her life. May Nomura Arakawa was born in 1932 in Sacramento, and as we heard, the fourth of five children, the only girl among her siblings. Like so many others of her generation, growing up with the daily struggles of the Depression, and then to turn around when a world war broke out and be forcibly sent to a camp in Topaz, Utah, really shaped a lot of her attitudes later on in life. May loved playing sports and was part of an informal group that called themselves the Funsters. There are some old photographs in the family photo albums of her posing with her team and basketball tournament trophies. And she was also an ardent Dodgers fan. Janice remembers uh, the summers when she would sit with her mom listening to the game on a transistor radio or watching a basketball game on TV where May got so excited she would yell and punch Janice on the arm until finally Janice had to get up and move away. <laughs> Later on, May took up golf and in fact continued to play with friends well into her 80s. She would probably be very pleased and proud to know that her set of golf clubs have been passed down and are now being used by granddaughter Brianna out on the course. But it was going out bowling one night in 1962 where she met a young electrical engineer from Hawaii named Wally Arakawa. Two years later they were married and followed by in quick succession by three daughters, Kathy, Joyce, and Janice. Now at that point, a whole new phase of family life began. Now it may seem quaint by today's standards, but in the 60s, the expectation for families was that the husband would head out every morning to work while the wife would stay home and take care of the kids in the household. It was into this role that May jumped, with the rel jumped in with a relish. And of course, one memory that Kathy, Joyce, and Janice all talk about when growing up was their mom always driving them somewhere after school. It was some lesson or another that, was, that they had been signed up for. Piano lessons, guitar, swimming, diving, tennis, ballet, flamenco dancing, gymnastics, ice skating. That exhausting list just went on and on. But again, when you look at it through the lens of history, after growing up with very little during the Depression, she really wanted to make sure that her children would have all the experiences and things that she never had growing up. Family became the main focus in May's life. And after raising three daughters, next came the grandkids. For many years, there was a tradition that came to be known as Camp Auntie Kathy, where Brianna, Reese, and Benjamin would come down and spend a week in LA during the summer. Now they, along with Kayla and Becca, would sleep over at Grandpa and Grandma's house where they would always look forward to the blueberry muffins Grandma would make for breakfast. And then Wally and May would gamely come along to whatever activity was planned for that day, amusement parks, museums, or whatever else was on the schedule, just to spend time with the grandkids. May and Wally would also often go out with friends for an evening or to play golf. She loved going to the theater and watching musicals. And there were periodic dinner meetings with an investment group. And of course, there was church on Sundays, 
where every few months May would make a big batch of spaghetti for the spaghetti luncheon held here at Union. There were always dinners and trips and vacations with relatives from both sides of the family. After retiring, May and Wally finally had the time to go on trips and cruises all over the world with the other aunties and uncles. After so many years of working and raising their children who are now grown with families of their own, they took the opportunity to finally get out and enjoy themselves. At a family get-together in Big Bear a few years ago, the grandparents were all talking about how happy they were to see their now adult children and grandchildren all enjoying spending time together, just like they did for so many years. It's a tradition that continues to this day, and one that May and Wally would be so happy to see is being passed on to the next generation. Now, one notable personality of May's was that she had no problem speaking what was on her mind. She could be pretty blunt, which sometimes took people by surprise. Uh, years ago, when Kathy and I were at a family get-together, I was talking to one of the other husbands, and he said, you know, Kathy's mom is really kind of scary. <laughs> but I said, well, you know, she's all right, as long as you stay on her good side. But at least you knew where you stood with her. And if you tried to say anything, you would get the famous, bah, bah. But still, no matter what, you always knew that if you needed help with anything, she would always be right there for her family. Now, no matter how active you might be, eventually time and age catches up with everyone. In August of 2021, Wally and May moved to the Nikkei Gardens Assisted Living Facility. Now, once they were there, though, May enjoyed participating in a lot of the many activities they had for residents. Kathy, Joyce, and Janice soon learned to check the activity schedule before calling or visiting, because if it was casino day, the phone call would usually last for a minute or two, and then it was, oh, well, thanks for calling, got to go. Like, <laughs> Now, sadly, Wally went home to be with the Lord in February of 2022. After that, May began to slow down even more from declining health. Toward the end, Kathy went to visit one day. But as she was talking, May would keep looking off to the side and smiling. Kathy couldn't figure out what she could be looking at, so she finally turned around to see. And there on the wall, was a picture of Wally that May would look at and smile, remembering moments from a lifetime together. May joined Wally in heaven on May 13th of this year, a few days after her 91st birthday and the day before Mother's Day. And though it's sad, the rest of the family is reassured that we will all be reunited again forever with the Lord. Until then, May leaves behind a legacy to family and friends of devotion and strength and love and a spaghetti recipe that granddaughter Becca still insists is the best. Thank you, Vern. That was wonderful, just wonderful. Now we're going to have um, uh, we're going to be ministered to by a recording, right, of a song uh, that was that is sung by Elizabeth Yonemura, granddaughter of May. Go ahead and play the recording. Savior, I come, quiet my soul, remember, redemption's hill, your blood was spilled, my
and try human the word became flesh for my sin and death now you're risen everything I once held dear I count it all as lost lead me to the cross where your love poured out bring me to my knees Lord I lay me down rid me of myself I belong to you oh lead me lead me to the cross to your Wow, that was wonderful. Does singing uh, go with the three s sisters here? No, no singing? Oh, we'd get you up here. Anyway, that was uh, great to have her, at least uh, by video. Okay, uh, we're now going to have a video tribute uh, to May. It'll be shown up on the screen. Enjoy this. It is beautifully, beautifully done.
So how did you like that? 
Well, I think uh, when you see a video like that, it deserves an applause, don't you think? Let's give it. <clears throat> well done, well done. You know, a couple of things about the video. <clears throat> I told Kathy and, the, and her sisters that, uh, remember this video is about May, okay? Boy, they did a great job, real, real well. The other thing is, uh, you know, I look at that picture where um, in her personal history, uh, they talked about her being, as a young girl, uh, in this funsters group, okay? I should like to know what they did, you know? They should have had, they probably had a wonderful, wonderful time. And then the other thing, uh, I love the golf pictures. I wonder how good a golfer your mom was, okay? But the last thing I, I look at is, um, you know, May was a really good looker, huh? right? Wally, he never had a chance. But I'll tell you, she was beautiful in her youth and in her elder years. Beautiful on the outside and on the inside. Yeah, very, very wonderful. You know, as all of you are here, uh, you know, I, I'm thinking, um, you know, how often you get a chance to see each other. Uh, you know, when you do um, sit down and have a meal together in the social hall later, I uh, hope you get a chance to reminisce and talk about me and Wally and the things you remember and because a family would be indebted to you greatly uh, if you did that, okay? Okay, earlier, uh, you know, Martin came up here and he read a scripture out of chapter 14, verse 27. Let me read it again. It goes, peace I leave you. My peace I give to you. This is Jesus talking. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled nor fearful. Okay? You know, when you, uh, it's a great scripture out of a great chapter in the Bible. And it, sometimes uh, chapter 14 uh, could be called the peace chapter. If you look at the context of uh, what Jesus is saying here, uh, you have to go back to chapter 13. And what chapter 13 says is that Jesus has just told his disciples in the upper room that he is going to leave them, okay? And furthermore, he tells them that one of them is going to be betray him betray him and the disciples look at him and they say no way it ain't gonna happen okay and they're in disbelief so much so that they start asking Jesus questions like Thomas says Lord we do not know where you are going how do we know the way Philip said Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. They wanted more. And Judas said, Lord, what has happened that you will reveal yourself to us, but not to the world? So these disciples have a lot of questions. They have a lot of doubt. They're anxious, especially when Jesus tells him, that he is going to be leaving them, okay? So Jesus brings comfort to the disciples by saying, he says, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you, do not let your hearts be troubled. When Jesus said that to the disciples, 
He's telling that same thing to all of us as we mourn and as we say goodbye to a beloved friend. If you go to the first part of chapter 14, uh, Jesus has this to say again to comfort the disciples and to comfort us. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And he goes on, in my father's house are many rooms. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And he ends the passage with, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay. May, May believed in her Savior, Jesus. She believed that he has prepared a place for her in heaven. That Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life. She knew that. And if you look at the end of her personal history, which was read to you earlier, you're going to have this with you. Just go back and reflect on that last sentence. It says... She is dearly missed, but her family is comforted and at peace, knowing that she is now reunited with Wally and at home with the Lord. Not just at home with the Lord for a time being, at home with the Lord forever, forever. Peace, I leave you. My peace I give to you. And that's for all of us. Amen? Amen. You know, a benediction <clears throat> is a blessing. And it's normally given at the end of a service so that uh, you all can walk away with a blessing from God. So that's what a benediction is. So receive the blessing that comes from God as you leave this place. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the fullness of his face to you and give you peace. This day, on the day that we celebrate a life well lived and forevermore. Amen. Everybody say amen. Amen. Okay. Okay, I'm going to call up uh, Martin again, and he has some words of appreciation from the family. Martin. Thank you. On, so on behalf of the entire family, we'd like to thank you for joining us here today. Um, especially thank you for your, all your prayers, your thoughts, and all, especially all your love throughout all, all this time. Um, additionally, I know it means a lot to Kathy, Joyce, and Janice that you took the time out to be with us here to celebrate May's life today. And finally, we'd like to ask that you join us for lunch afterwards in celebration of May's life and fellowship. So again, thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Martin. <clears throat> okay, we are now going to have what is called the final tribute. Now, the way this is going to work is we're going to ask, and the ushers will direct you, we're going to ask people to come down the middle aisle, pay your respects to May, right up front here. And then if you would also go through the front row here and give and pay your respects to the sisters. <laughs> you guys are great. Anyway, so I'm, uh, those of you that are sitting on the side, if you would join the last rows on the middle section, 
as they, everybody comes down, and there'll be alternating rows as you go. So just wait for the ushers to direct your role. Okay, let's do it. <laughs>